Welcome back. We are here on eToro, and this is going to be my daily forecast for Wednesday, January 27, 2021. So I've made uh, some changes to my channel. I'll no longer be making uh, uh, five separate videos. I will be making two videos. Uh, one that includes the cryptocurrency market, the foreign exchange market, and also the commodities and precious metals market, while the full technical analysis of, uh, of the indices, uh, the commodities market, and the, uh, the precious metals market, that will be available over at our Patreon channel, um, and the link is down below. So I've also included... Um, I've also decided to just use the eToro platform as it will be easier to um, include more um, currencies, cryptocurrencies, commodities, and so on, and indices as well, um, if members want to uh, see more content and so on. So you just write in the, in the comment section if you uh, wish to have some, um, some more indices or stocks or whatever included in the videos and i will try to include more content but we'll start by looking at the foreign exchange market then we'll start by looking at the cryptocurrency market and then we'll start by looking at the commodities and precious metals market so let's look at we'll start by looking at the us dollar index and as you can see we rallied quite significantly in the US dollar index in the beginning of the trading session. I thought that we were going to rally above the 50 moving average, but we did not do that. We broke down below the 20 exponential moving average, and now we're trading roughly at 1909. So at this point, it is more likely that we'll head towards the lower le levels here than we are going to break the 50 moving average. We have tested the 50 several times in the, in the past, um, and we have not managed to break that. If we manage to break it, then we'll head towards the 200 moving average most likely. But at this point, um, there is just not the momentum enough in order to break the 50 moving average. Technical indicators are turning around as well. So it's very likely that we'll head towards this, the bottom. And that will have major implication for the currencies that we are going to look at on the commodities and also the indices and, and stocks. So we'll start by looking at the Great British Pound, the US dollar. So as you can see, we have rallied quite significantly today. We basically tested these previous highs. Um, at the moment, I don't think that we're going to go significantly higher. Uh, to the lows, we can see that the 20 exponential is holding really well, and so is the 50. So getting down towards the 20 that's a buying opportunity getting down to the 50 is an even better buying opportunity so at the moment we are at the top of this range if we manage to break above here then we are going quite significantly higher but the thing is that we are fairly overstretched at this point there is probably not that uh, enough momentum to the upside for this to uh, rally significantly more uh, but a pullback towards the 20 that's a buying opportunity and at least these highs are are the target at them at this point so let's look at the us dollar yen we can see that we tried to rally up towards the 50 and then broke down now we're trading underneath the 20 exponential moving average and at this point i think that we are going to go even lower if we manage to break these previous lows here then we are heading all the way down towards 120.57 so we are in a downtrend we have been in this downtrend for quite some time the 50 moving average has been a massive resistant in this uh, for this currency pair and as long as we haven't broken that significantly i haven't traded trended towards the 200 moving average um, every move towards the 50 moving average is considered to be a major uh, selling opportunity. So every single time we have got to the 50 moving average, we have gone even lower and lower. And probably now we're going to break uh, these lows here if we don't manage to break above the 50. And it doesn't look like we're going to do that. Technical indicators are also turning around. So target is basically these very lows. And that is roughly 102 to 59. So let's look at the euro US dollar. So as you can see, we broke down towards the 50 moving average, rallied. Now we're above the 
20 exponential moving average. And at this moment, due to the fact that the US dollar is starting to depreciate and these technical indicators are actually turning around, it is very likely that we'll cross the 20 exponential and trade above that and head towards these previous highs. So that's the 12.33. Uh, that is our target. Stop loss could be set underneath the 50 moving average as a, as a, to lower the risk. So at this point, uh, at this point, we are targeting these previous highs. So let's look at the US dollar, Canadian dollar. So we tried to rally up towards the 50 moving average, broke down. Now we're trading significantly lower uh, below the 20 exponential. At this moment, the very lows here are the targets. So 1259 is the is the first target. If that breaks, then we are probably going to 1250. So we have been in a downtrend for quite some time. We first downtrend was here, and then in mid-August we broke out of that downtrend, and then we continue in another downtrend. And every single time we get close to the 20 exponential or the 50, that is basically major selling opportunities for this currency pair. So at this moment, we tried to rally to the 50. That did not happen at all. And now we're trading underneath the 20 exponential. Technical indicators are turning around and the target is these previous lows here. So let's look at the cryptocurrency market. So we'll start by looking at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has been abysmal the last few, uh, actually a few weeks, uh, two weeks and a half. We have been slowly trending towards the 50 moving average. Last time we got to the 50 moving average was over here at the down, we're roughly at the 28,700. And uh, now we're trading at roughly 31,842. So the 50 is major support here. If the 50 breaks, then we are going significantly lower. So the RSI has decreased significantly. We were above 80 when we were at the highest over here. And this was also a parabolical move to the upside. And usually we fall significantly. Uh, we haven't fall as drastically as we have seen Bitcoin fall in the past, but this has been also a fairly um, massive move. We went from 40, uh, 32,000 all the way down to 31,020, and here was 28,000. So uh, severely dropped from the for all the all all time highs, nearly half. If we look at the weekly for Bitcoin, we can see that we are still overbought. We are 74, but uh, at this point, the weekly is looking more and more bearish. I would not be surprised if we went significantly lower uh, from here. If you look at the Fibonacci retracement for, for, uh, for Bitcoin, we can see that, I think the very highs, the first Fibonacci retracements are here. 27,000 is very likely that we'll get down to that level. That's also where the 50 moving average is in the daily chart. So that could be a... Uh, could be a place where we go, but I would also bet that we could go all the way down to 23,000. So that's roughly uh, half of the value lost in Bitcoin in this period. And that could happen in the next three to four weeks. Uh, we did have a, a similar move back in 2017 when we went all the way up to 20,000 and then broke down to roughly 10,000 rallied up to 17,000 and then broke all the way down to 3,000. So Bitcoin has not been that volatile as back in 27. Uh, we, of course, had this massive move to the upside, but we also had in one week it lost half of its value. We have not seen that. It has lost roughly 25, 27% in the last three weeks and could lose... Um, additional 10% in the next, or 10, 15% in the next, uh, well, give or take, uh, probably next month, if this holds. This should be major support here. We have the 20 exponential moving this way, and we have also the Fibonacci retracement of 50% here. So 23, if this breaks, then we'll go all down to 61. That's at 18,000 at this current stage. So let's look at Ethereum. So as you can see, we'll look at the daily chart first. Um, Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin. So there are probably some reasons for that. 
First of all, Bitcoin is uh, one that everybody was talking about. It got all the big news and was everywhere. And so people just bought into it. So it was significantly overbought. And uh, the other cryptocurrency did not get the similar news. Uh, furthermore, this is cheaper. People may look at this as a bigger opportunity to score big in this cryptocurrency compared to Bitcoin. So back in the days when Bitcoin was uh, valued half a dollar or something like that, um, then you had real uh, opportunity to become really rich by investing in it. Uh, that has basically, that those gains have basically gone. In order to, if you, for example, when Bitcoin was at highs now, it was at 40, you know, 42,000. Doubling that goes to 84,000. And, and that's something that we probably won't see for months and months, if probably ever. But in these crypt cryptocurrencies, we're down at... Uh, thousand uh, probably 10 or 50 100 level um, so there's a more gains to be um, gained from these cryptocurrency if they rally in the same way bitcoin rallies that is to be seen so we're looking at each term here uh, we are slowly going sideways at this point technical indicators are showing that we are basically getting exhausted here and we are going to the downside so i would not the 20 exponential is major support, but I would be fairly uh, surprised if we saw a major move to the upside in this cryptocurrency market at this current stage. Uh, I would not also be surprised if we broke the 20 exponential and head towards the 50 before we rallied in this market. If Bitcoin uh, falls, for, uh, falls even more, then it will drag most of these cryptocurrencies with them. But at the moment, 20 exponential is holding uh, there's a lot of choppiness in this uh, in the interim at this moment. It rallies plus minus three percent three percent in the daily basis at this current stage. But technical, technical indicators are not looking favorable for this um, cryptocurrency. Um, MACD is becoming bearish. The stochastic is across the signal line. CCI is looking bearish, and RSI is also uh, coming flat at this point. So, but. Pullbacks towards the 20 exponential that are buying opportunities still with a stop loss right underneath. So let's look at Litcoin. So Litcoin has reached support. It will be really interesting whether or not this breaks the 50 moving average. We're trading in between the 20 exponential and the 50 moving average at this point. And if we break the 50, that could basically be a tidal wave all the way down to the 200 moving average to these previous levels here. So 20, uh, 200 moving average is at 73 at this point, and that will be a horrible day for Litcoin. I, that probably won't happen in one go. It will probably break down, rally, and then go because we are fairly low here in the RSI and a breakdown all the way down to the 200 moving average would basically leave the RSI at single digits and we would see buyers come in way before that. So. Other technical indicators are looking very bearish at this point. So, yeah, we'll see. Rally above the, the 200 moving average. Now, the 20 exponential moving average opens the door to these previous highs at 164 and then to 184. So, let's look at NEO. So, NEO, what looked really promising here, we went from all the way from $13 all the way up towards $28, and then we broke down, and now we're trading at $22. 20 exponential is still holding. We're still trading above that, but it, this is going to be a real stretch whether or not we manage to hold this here. A break below the 20 exponential moving average opens the door to the 50 and then to the 200, and probably 50 is where we are going to go. If you look at the Fibonacci retracement, we should probably get it here because the one was very overstretched. We can see that uh, the, that we have broken the first one. The second one's down here at 21, at point 20, 29, and the third one is down here at 19.56 dollars, and that's just above the 50 moving average. And that would make sense. That would go down there before we go higher. So, if we break the 20 exponential. Then we are going all the way down to these levels. Rally from here could open the door to $25 and then towards $28. So we'll see if we rally from here. 
So let's look at the commodities market and the precious metals market. We'll start by looking at oil. So as you can see, we had tried to rally and then broke down. We are in the red at this point. We're trading at $52.48 and uh, 20 exponential is still holding. Technical indicators are looking um, very bearish at this point. We're still above a zero in the MACD, so we're still in the uptrend, but we're underneath the signal line. So we are bearish in this uptrend, you can say. Stochastic is crossing the signal line, becoming bearish, the same, and uh, and the CCI is flat, and the RSI is flat at this point. So the target is most likely $55. Uh, we'll most likely trade sideways, 20 exponential will move this way, and then we'll get a pop towards the $55 uh, range. Um, if we may break the 20 exponential moving average, we'll head towards 50, that's at $74, uh, $47, or, or $48, I was supposed to say. So uh, 20 exponential is still holding, so 55 is most likely our target at this point. So let's look at natural gas. So you can see that we have rallied up towards the 50 moving average, but this is still just more of the same. We have broken down, rally, broken down, rally up towards the 50, broken down, rally up towards the 20 exponential, rally up towards the 50, and now yet again, rally up towards. So I think that we're probably going to turn around there. It's probably going to take a few days. It will most likely also break the 50, and then similar to what we did here, and then head towards the 200 moving average. But it looks like we there is uh, that the 50 is going to travel this way, cross the, the 200 moving average, and then we'll start trending underneath uh, the 200 moving average at that point. And at that stage, we'll probably go and target $2, and probably even much lower than that, 1.5, and so on. So, yes, I'm still not buying this. If we manage to break the 50 and start trending significantly higher, um, then probably it will be a buy, but at this point, there's no reason to buy this. Technical indicators uh, are looking fairly bullish, but we have seen this move several times before. The 20, uh, 200 moving average is significant support, so every time we get close to that, it, this will rally. But at some point, it will break and then we'll head lower. So let's look at copper. So as you can see, we broke down towards the, uh, the 3.57 um, range and then we rallied. So this is a market that we did enter today. I think this is going to rally significantly, at least to these previous highs here. So 3.7 is, um, is a target that we have set us. And uh, as soon as the US dollar starts depreciating, this it will be very bullish for this market. And so... Um, we entered here, stop loss right underneath, uh, and uh, we'll target those highs. That should be a fairly easy trade. Um, we haven't broken the 20 exponential significantly for a really long time. We have to go all the way back to the beginning of August when we broke down below the 50 moving average. Here, it looks like we're trading sideways before we pop to the upside. So let's look at the S&P 500. So as you can see, we have rallied yet again today. We're trading at 3,854. We were in the old time highs here at roughly 3,865 and then gave most of those gains back. We are getting fairly overstretched. Um, we're on the edge of being overbought. Uh, we are in this uh, channel here. So there's still some room to the upside and uh, we have the lower channel right here. So. We are basically in the middle of the channel. We could head towards roughly 3,900. 4,000 is mostly the long-term target here. So 3,900 will probably break down towards 3,822 and then just go zigzag within this channel. 20 exponential is just underneath and that is major support as we saw yesterday when we broke down towards uh, 3,800. A lot of buying occurred at that stage. A break below that will break basically the channel and that is very unlikely at this point it's more likely that we'll head to break the, uh, the upper channel uh, but 
as long as we are in this channel here, it's fairly predictable to buy. Um, I don't sell indices because they're basically made in order to go go higher. So the better thing to do is basically to take advantage when they break towards support and just buy them there. So here, waiting until we get roughly down towards this channel here or the 20 exponential, and then there's basically a buying opportunity. So let's look at the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones broke towards the 20 exponential, which is uh, support, and uh, we are basically been trading downwards. It broke quite significantly down yesterday at 30,581, 30, um, then rallied again above the 20 exponential. Now we tried to test the 20 again today, and these second indicators are also getting fairly mixed. I don't expect this to break the 20 exponential, uh, but uh, it is not as... Uh, bullish as the S&P, for example, is. So uh, tech has been doing the biggest gains in the in previous days. So at this point, I have to just see where that, that DAO, is, DAO is going. Uh, break below the 20 exponential opens the door to the 50. And there will be a massive amount of support down the 50. But uh, if we get close to the 200, 20 exponential moving average, and then roughly a 30,800, and then... Um, it could make a buy here, a stop loss underneath, and then a target of roughly 31,500. So let's look at the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is trading at 13,563. At this point, it is getting over, it is basically overbought. So we were in the channel and we could almost say that we have broken out of this channel and uh, Last time we did that, I will take give the example here in a moment. Last time we were in the channel and broke out, it was basically here. So we went completely parabolical and then it just collapsed. We went from 12,400 all the way down to 10,700, give or take. So this is necessarily not a very good thing. We also got out of it. You know, we also got very parabolical here, broke down. Also parabolical here, broke down. If you look at the at the Bollinger Band for the Nasdaq, you can see that we are outside of the Bollinger Band here. And usually, when the Nasdaq gets outside of the Bollinger Band, it breaks down quite significantly. So I'm waiting for a pullback at least towards the 20 exponential. So that is for 30, 13,000. Um, a break below the channel of the door to the 50 moving average, that's at 12,600, and that is not um, an overestimate. If you, if you see this move here, uh, when we got outside of the bullish band and got overstretched and got overbought, because we are going to see a pullback. It's going to uh, come at some point here. And uh, at this point, just wait for the pullback in order to take advantage of uh, that. So let's look at the DAX. So as you can see, we fell yesterday towards uh, the 50 moving average, and that's where we decided to enter this market. Um, if you look at the four hour chart, you can see that we stuck around here. So this is basically where we entered. And that's why I entered this market here. We rallied quite significantly, did a fairly good trade, and then we stuck. Thank you.